Welcome back to Overhead Athletics. I'm joined by Freddie. Freddie is my man. He's also an Nakona glove guy. And we're looking at his mechanics here. And we're having him throw and looking at a few different things. And what we want to emphasize in this video is the importance of qualitative biomechanics. Looking at things from a qualitative perspective as compared to always looking at things from a quantitative perspective. We know that a lot of the current literature out there and we know that a lot of the current studios and biomechanics labs out there are doing almost all of their work from a quantitative perspective and i appreciate quantitative data because it really can guide our clinical decisions but when we look at athletes in the clinic we often have our quantitative data but we really need to look at our qualitative data because i've had people go to the most renowned sports medicine institutes in the country some very popular biomechanics labs, they come back here after they failed there because they did not get better because things were not addressed in the way they needed to be addressed. Simply looking at how an athlete throws is gonna tell you a lot about their movement signature and what's going on in their throw. So I'm gonna have Freddie go like he's playing catcher. And when you're watching this, you need to have a trained eye. Qualitative biomechanics, does take a trained eye to understand what you're looking at. A lot of times we, look, we, we have all these things and we get all this data and it's great, but if we don't know what the data means, it, it's really pointless to us. The same thing when we watch an athlete throw. Go ahead. What you see with him is that he takes the ball far back behind him as the initial movement out of his throw. So I'm already taking that into account and then when I actually have him throw from a full stretch, I'm going to look at what he does there. And I'll use slow motion capture to look at this, but I like to see it in real time as well. What do you see from behind? Watch it again. Watch how he takes the ball out of his glove right from the start. Good. So now we're looking from another angle here, and I'm going to have Freddy go through his regular throwing motion, and then we're going to have him go through his pitching motion. And we're going to look at the signature that we see, the pathway of least resistance. You're not going to identify that when you look at kin kinematic profiles or kinetics of the throw. You're going to identify that when you watch an athlete throw. It's a very important to train your eyes to see certain things. Go ahead, Freddie. He likes to take the ball out and back in the start of his throw. If we watch him do that one more time, we'll see it again. We're taking these things into account. Where does that lead his arm to be as he starts to go forward? It leads to him being longer and leaving his arm further behind. As he includes more complex movement, there's more moving parts, i.e. the full pitch. And as we look at higher intensities of movement, we're going to see these things come out even more because this is the pathway of least resistance. And this is why you don't always have to look at somebody throwing at a high rate of speed to see what they're doing in an inefficient manner. You can often look at them in a slower rate of speed because they have an injury or whatever else it's precluding them from throwing at a high rate of speed and you'll find the same inefficiencies if you look with a detailed eye what is his movement predisposition or pathway of least resistance okay full stretch now you see that he starts to bring the ball back further behind his body and then come out and around do it again Good. And I look at this from multiple angles. So you see back behind the body comes out further. So now with qualitative biomechanics, I've identified his movement predispositions by having him go at a slower rate of speed from his regular throw and then having him go at a higher, higher, slightly higher intensity, but a more complex movement from his full pitch. So then we have to say, how can we get him away from that movement? And we're going to go into position four here for you. So Freddie's position four is just going to move him in the opposite direction. So he's actually out in front of his body with his arm. He's rotated into his hip, and he's got a little bit more elbow flexion, and then we can have him throw. And now you see that he never ends up behind his body, never drags his arm. This is qualitative biomechanics. This is why it's important. You've got to combine this with your data sets. Go ahead. That looks really, really nice. So then 
you can say from an aesthetic perspective, which is often equally important to performance when you talk about making teams and tryouts, aesthetically it looks a lot better. Scouts are going to look at that and say, wow, that looks like a lot better throw. Now I'm going to have him do the same thing from here. And then he has to internalize these sorts of things over time. The point here is not to show you necessarily how to correct somebody's throw, but it's to say, how can we look at this from a movement quality perspective, go. And then how can we have him do something and then have him complete the movement again and see if it looks the, the same way or different. So now I want you to go from your stretch, but I want it to feel the way it just felt with that movement. Do the same thing. All of a sudden, it's a drastically different throw. I'm gonna bring you back behind. Now we'll look from behind. I want him to do the same thing again. You'll see that it doesn't end up behind his body. So all of a sudden, a much better throw, and that's why qualitative biomechanics is important because it gives me real-time feedback on the effectiveness of different motor learning interventions. Don't neglect analyzing and looking at human movement with slow motion capture and with your naked eyes to look at how an athlete moves and make corrections in real time. You don't need a goniometer. You don't need all these complex tools. When an athlete's moving the wrong way and they're at that they're at the absolute limit of their joint. They're at their arthrological limit as they drag their arm through the acceleration phase. It doesn't take any complex statistics to figure that out. You can see it with your eyes. Utilize your eyes, combine that with your data so you have a full picture of what's going on with every athlete. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. We'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks, Freddie.